right, folks, today I'm going to present three ways how to get into venture capital. I get asked this question a lot, you know, so people ask me, hey, you know, I want to do startup acceleration or venture capital, which are two different things. Um, after university, what should I do? <clears throat> and uh, today we're just going to talk about venture capital, about what I know and three ways on how to get there directly after graduation you know we can do another video if you say okay I have a little bit more time I can spend one two three years after my graduation and then go into VC uh, I can do and there are multiple options if you want to do it like this but if you want to get into VC right after graduation right first one the ideal path now this is a little bit optimistic and also a little bit unrealistic, but nevertheless, let's uh, let's mention it, okay? Uh, what would be what's the ideal hiring profile for a VC? It's someone who has founded something, who received funding, so who has been on the other side of the nego negotiation table during uh, venture capital uh, negotiations, deals. Uh, signing of term sheets etc and so that's why pathway number one is during university is a great time to start something so during your university time start a company make it fairly successful you know uh, have a couple of employees receive seed funding which nowadays is not even that difficult I mean, yeah, you have to have a good company, have a good startup idea, but it's doable. Um, receive seed funding, <clears throat> then try to exit towards the end of your studies, you know, so you'll have to be pretty quick. Uh, start the company on the first day when you join the university and exit on the last one, so to say. And then, trust me, you will have many, many opportunities to start at a VC firm uh, either as an analyst or as an uh, as an associate, which is more probable if you put your cards, if you uh, you know play your cards right, you'll be able to enter as an associate. Um, so that is option number one. Option number two, the quant guy. Now, this one is obviously for people who are uh, into numbers, who can who like to deal with numbers. So this way is also not for everyone huh? but what you can do if you like numbers is um, have a couple of internships up your sleeve in the right areas so for example investment banks are a good thing to do uh, private equity uh, firms are a good thing to do if you can even get into a hedge fund man would also be nice so get into a couple of these prestigious and highly numbers driven um, institutions especially if you're an analyst or an intern at these institutions and firms it's very numbers driven right I mean as an as an intern at an, at an investment bank you're going to deal with Excel 90% of the time you do a couple of internships here and there and that's doable if you like numbers and if you have the good grades and if if like dealing with Excel the whole day doesn't make you puke, uh, then this is do doable. Um, and then during that time, start building those first connections, right? If you do your internship at a private equity firm, they will know a couple of investors who invest earlier than them who might be venture capitalists. They will know a couple of angel guys maybe even and uh, start building those connections, buying these people coffee, picking their brain, um, and then you have a good shot at uh, joining a VC firm after you graduate. You will not be able to join as an associate, you will definitely join as an analyst, uh, as you are supposed to after graduation, Yeah, but you will have proven that you know how to deal with numbers, especially if it's a VC that's very numbers driven. So there are Two types of VCs, right? The ones that are usually investing a little bit earlier, early stage VCs, and don't place that much importance on numbers, and the ones that place high importance on numbers. And those tend to be 
later stage, but they don't have to. So you also have, don't get me wrong, you also have early stage VCs that place high importance on, of num on numbers. But I would say the, um, the probability that you come across a VC that doesn't uh, place importance on numbers uh, is higher in at the early stage, right? Because there are less numbers. There's just, there's basically the team. There's the founder and a couple of guys and girls and uh, you can evaluate them, you know, how do you like them or do they uh, look like they will can pull this off? Do they look like the next uh, Zuckerbergs? Yes, no, maybe. <clears throat> and that's basically what you can evaluate. Now, um, you will have a pretty good shot at joining those numbers driven VCs because they are looking for people that can crunch the numbers um, and they might not plan for you to stay at this VC firm forever, you know, so you they might not um, deem you as partner material, but at this point, do you even care? No, you just want to join a VC, right? So first option, start a startup, be freaking successful with it, and then start at a VC. Second option, go this numbers path, investment banks, funds, private equity, and then join a VC that has a numbers angle. Third option, the startups and tech enthusiast. So what you can do, um, you're probably, this, this person has a similar profile to the first pathway that we talked about. Someone who has a certain affinity for starting things, who generally likes startups, likes working in this environment. So if you're like this, and you can't imagine really starting your own thing and making it successful within three or five years, depending on how long you study, which is totally okay, you know, because it's not an easy thing to do um, <clears throat> and receive funding. Um, you can do like a washed down version of that. So you could join a couple of startups during your time at the university some startups because startups are usually pretty flexible so you will probably even be able to work on the site at a startup in some junior role so like have a full-time or half-time job during your studies um, you can do full-time internships at those startups and you can generally look into tech and startup related roles you know maybe start working at a co-working space uh, work at an accelerator program, um, you know, work at a nice tech startup and uh, find yourself a job next to your university also at a startup. And this way, uh, two things happen. First of all, you get very familiar with the startup ecosystem, which is great, which is something that VCs are looking for. They want people like this. Um, but on the other hand, you also get to know the right people. Uh, so you don't only get to know the topics, you also get to know the people and those people can then again help you to network with the right VCs because if you're working at a startup, chances are if it's somewhat of a fairly decently successful startup that they will have received funding or they are planning to raise funding uh, in the near future. So these people have access to the firms that you aspire to work at, right? So that's really what you want to do, you know, uh, work in different startups and then attempt to join a VC firm. Again, this will be um, you joining as an analyst and uh, a little side note, this will work better with those VCs that we mentioned that are more not so quantitatively driven. Depending on what you did at those startups, right, if you worked at the startups and you did uh, like certain operations roles where you work with Excel tables that are, you know, many, many 10,000 lines long and you did a couple of cool things with them, then yeah, you might also join those uh, quantitatively driven VCs. Um, but, you know, if you uh, basically you did a lot of business development roles at those startups, uh, things like that, assistant to the CEO, etc., then you are maybe a little bit better fit for those um, uh, early stage VCs in most cases that are not looking at the numbers so much. But that's just, you know, a side note could also turn out differently. Um, but those are just my two cents. So now the conclusion, what do we learn from all of that? Huh? So we have these three paths. And now let me tell you something. There are much more than three. Huh? So 
of course, uh, the uh, path to working at a venture capital firm is not set in stone. There's many, many different options to get there. It's much less standardized than if you, say, want to work in an investment bank or at a management consulting firm. So you really need to be careful, uh, be um, thoughtful about where you go, how you play your cards, and lastly, you also need to be lucky. And that's just the thing. You also need to have a certain amount of luck. And let me tell you, what I would do is combine elements from all of these three paths. So it makes sense to have internships at institutions or companies that, uh, that teach you how to deal with big sets of data, investment banks for example. It makes sense to have worked in a startup environment or to work at a startup on the site. It also makes sense to start something on your own, you know, if it's not next Facebook, then maybe it's just a small, like start with a small gathering, like a monthly gathering of people interested in a certain topic at your university or something like that, you know, just, it's just about starting something and then you can think about how, where to take that and how to make it grow a little bit and make it look more like a, like an actual startup than just, you know, like a hobby. So that would be my advice to you, combine that make the best out of it and in the end also just be lucky so I wish you all of the best luck and uh, let me know in the comments what else uh, you want to know about me um, about uh, things that I know about you know it, I don't know a lot but uh, the things I know are highly interesting bye bye